Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate today this second Sunday of Easter, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. A true blessing to us, not only for the reality that it entails, but also a great blessings that we get to spread this message during this year of mercy, of what God has done and continues to do for us. So dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace, peace to people, people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet, more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus. They even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns and the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, be, to Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks. of Israel say his mercy endures forever let the house of Aaron say his mercy endures forever 
let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for His good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling. But the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord for His. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself in the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, Write down a scroll, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me, and when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, and in the midst of, a, of the lampstands, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you see, and what is happening, and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, when their disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, 
and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. <coughs> the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As the saying goes, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. And it's the truth. If you're anything like me, a matter of fact, you get particularly irritated when your own plans, the most best laid ones, always get messed up. But there's a saying that we have in vocations, because let's face it, for us ministers, distractions are nothing new. It's something we face every day. And so comes the saying for vocations, and that is that in the priesthood, it is a life of distractions, a life of reacting to distractions, a life of dealing with them. But if you think about it, for just a moment, distractions may upset us, but they in no way hinder God's ability to work, His ability to pivot His love and mercy and compassion in order to always bring people closer to Him. And ironically, it's through distractions, often through distractions, that God's mercy and grace work sometimes the best. Just in that moment where he called the disciples and had them put out into the deep, though all night long they fished without success, it was in that moment a great grace happened, despite the distraction. The same with today's gospel. Thomas, poor Thomas, always remembered for being the doubting one, nevertheless is addressed by our Lord as he addresses the rest of the apostles that blessed are those who do not see but yet believe. And yet Thomas knew or rather, Thomas needed, and our Lord knew, that Thomas needed to see the same things the other men saw. And so instead of going according to his plans, instead he bowed, he, he knelt, he bent down, he condescended to be with us, to be with Thomas, to be with the apostles. And as a matter of fact, isn't that all of salvation history? God having plans, we messing it up, and him coming to be with us so that we can be with him. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, friends, and during this year of mercy, never forget that despite the distractions, God will often do His best work and show best His mercy. May we do the same for others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Amen. 
God's mercy endures forever. And so we bring to God all our prayers for the needs of the world. For those whose faith is tenuous, for those who have no community to call their own, that during this Jubilee year of mercy, they may see the face of divine mercy through us, find a home among us, and grow stronger in their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Pope Francis and all leaders throughout the church, as they bear witness to the great mercy of God through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the peace of our risen Lord throughout all the world, especially in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Iran, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For healing for all who are sick and for all those who treat them and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For an increase in vocations to priesthood and religious life in the Archdiocese of Santa Fe, that more men and women will respond with generosity to the call to serve God in religious vocations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, you plant us in our community of faith to help our faith to grow. Hear these our prayers for our community and world and grant them through Jesus Christ, your Son and our risen Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation are at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, save from the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Dear people, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to let everyone watching at home, especially those homebound, know that you remain in our prayers and in our love the love of Jesus that we celebrate at this altar. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Let the mountains live with the